to Ghostfired Entertainment. I'm your host, Kanan Becker, and today we do another deep dive into Tubi. So for those of you not familiar with this channel, once a week I go searching through the popular streaming platforms and come up with 10 horror movies to recommend to you guys. This week I went searching through Tubi and came up with 10 horror movies that I think you will enjoy. And with that, let's get to the list! I don't see any- So Ghoul feels so cold and empty and just full of tragedy, but it's an absolute hidden gem. So it's about an American filmmaking crew who goes to Ukraine to film a documentary. So they're doing a story on the widespread cannibalism that was rampant in Ukraine during the 1930s under the Stalin regime. In 1932 and 1933, Ukraine suffered a terrible famine, which led many people to resort to cannibalism. And as they dig deeper into the story of cannibalism, they come across the story of the real life serial killer, Andrea Chikatilo. And from there, it gets so intense as it delves into the supernatural. But this is such a creepy movie. It's found footage at its best, done documentary style. But I really appreciated how they intertwined reality and the true stories of the atrocities that went on and this fictitious supernatural story. They blended it really well together. It just made for a really entertaining movie. And as the movie goes, it just gets very dark and gruesome. Just an absolutely savage ending to this movie. It's just a movie that I think if you're a fan of found footage, this is a must see. So Rampage is an absolutely explosive horror thriller. And I'm not talking about the big monkey movie starring The Rock. No, this is a totally different movie. This is a movie that just will not set right with everyone because in a lot of ways you are following the villain. So it's about a guy who's in his mid twenties and still lives at home with his parents. He works a job as a mechanic where he's underpaid and underappreciated. The movie just paints a picture of a guy who's really reached his breaking point. He's absolutely just fed up with the world around him. We're so precious, aren't we? Everyone's gotta live, everyone's gotta be happy. It's a joke. And as the movie unfolds, he just completely snaps and goes on a total rampage killing spree. And I think it's really fascinating because you're following this villain along the lines of the Joker. And at times I couldn't help myself but relate to this character. That is until he goes completely off the deep end and starts killing people. But it's really a small movie with really big punch that is just performed so well by Brendan Fletcher. It's an absolutely captivating movie with a really interesting twist towards the end. It's gritty and brutal, and I think it is definitely worth your time. Whoever you were, just forget about it. I can't. There's no one left to finish this but me. Eight millimeter. So eight millimeter is dark, creepy and disturbing. It tells the story of a private investigator played by Nicolas Cage, who has a wife and a daughter at home and a very simple, quiet life. That is until everything changes when he receives this new unsettling case. A wealthy elderly woman has found what appears to be a snuff film in the things of her recently deceased husband. And she gives it to Nicolas Cage and says, I need you to find out if this is real. Is this really a murder on this film? So he heads to California to try to dig deeper into this case, where he teams up with an employee of an adult video store played by Joaquin Phoenix. So Joaquin Phoenix helps him infiltrate into the deep seedy underbelly of the sex industry. And from there it just gets more and more disturbing as he goes deeper and deeper into this world to discover the truth. You dance with the devil. The devil don't change. The devil changes you. 
This movie just has an absolutely amazing cast. Besides Nicolas Cage and Joaquin Phoenix, it also stars James Gandolfini, Peter Stormore, Anthony Hild, and Katherine Keener. This is just a gritty crime movie that's also written by the same guy that wrote the movie Seven. This isn't exactly a horror movie, but it definitely has some horror moments. I think if you're into true crime type of stuff, you should definitely check this out. What have you done? Help me. Oh my God. Help me. So Isolation really surprised me just how good it is. But it surprised me even more that I had never heard of it. Because to be honest, this is my kind of movie. It's twisted with lots of gory body horror as well as creature feature elements. All the things that I absolutely love. So the movie takes place on a remote Irish farm where a group of five people unwillingly become a part of an experiment gone nightmarishly wrong. This movie gets so gross and evolves into a gortastic creature feature. The distressed subjects like lab rats. This is a small movie, but everything is done so well from the practical effects to the acting. I think it's an absolutely great horror movie that more people really need to check out. And I definitely highly recommend it. Daddy. Don't you love me anymore? <laughs> So 1408 is genuinely one of my all time favorite haunted ghost story kind of movies. The story follows an author played by John Cusack who investigates haunted locations. You find out pretty quickly on that he's very much a skeptic, but he goes to this hotel in New York and rents this famous room 1408 that is supposedly one of the most haunted locations in the world. In the 95 years of the hotel's existence, there have been 56 deaths in 1408. 56. No one's ever lasted more than an hour. Quickly after checking into the room, bizarre experiences start to happen. So even though this movie is entertaining and a lot of fun, it still goes pretty dark at times as well. It just goes deep into this character's emotions and the tragedies of things that have happened to him. He starts to really question what is reality. The special effects are a lot of fun in this movie and the acting is on point by John Cusack and then a small role by Samuel L. Jackson. That is probably my favorite part of the movie is the interaction between Samuel L. Jackson and John Cusack. I think this is an enjoyable movie that is really kind of a hidden gem at this point because you just don't hear a lot of people talk about it. If it's one that you've never checked out, I think you definitely should. Alphabet Killer. So The Alphabet Killer is an entertaining, true crime thriller loosely based on the true story of the double initial killings in New York. So when a preteen girl is abducted, raped, and murdered, a young detective played by Elijah Dushku investigates the crime. And quickly she gets obsessed with this case as she realizes that it's a serial killer. She starts seeing visions of the dead girls and she starts to question what reality is. I've always been a fan of Elijah Dushku and I think she does really great in this role even if she is a little over the top at times. So this isn't the kind of movie that's going to blow you away. But if you're a fan of things like Criminal Minds, I think you'll really enjoy this. So I definitely think you should check it out. So Horns is the first part of my double feature weekend, and it's a fun, quirky little movie. It's the kind of movie that does all the things and it does them well. It's about a man played by Daniel Radcliffe who is blamed for the murder of his girlfriend. And one morning he wakes up to find that he has grown a pair of horns. And soon he realizes that these horns give him supernatural powers. Everyone in this town is going crazy. Ah! I think it's because of me and these horns. You kill that innocent girl. Now the devil has claimed you. So he uses these powers to try to solve the murder of his girlfriend. So one of the best things about this movie is the soundtrack. It has so many great songs that really help set the tone. It has a dark sense of humor that is actually really funny. So many times you see these movies that have a dark sense of humor, 
but it's not really that funny. This one really has some very funny moments. Aesthetically, this is a very gorgeous movie that's artsy and very creative. There's a lot of attention to detail and care put into everything in this. It's such a roller coaster ride of emotions. Funny, creepy, it really hits you in the feels. This is the kind of movie that I definitely recommend. August 15th. Trust me, that is a day that Pico Mundo will never forget. So Odd Thomas is the second part of my double feature weekend. And like Horns, this is a fun fantasy type of horror movie with lots of laughs as well as heart. It's about a small town fry cook played by Anton Yelchin, who's an ordinary guy with a paranormal secret. He sees dead people. So when a creepy character shows up to the diner and is followed by these ghostly predators who feed on pain and destruction. Any of those Bodach things around? Bodach. When they do show up, it's a sure sign that carnage and bloodshed are not far behind. So this is a light horror movie, mostly a fantasy type of adventure. I've seen this movie so many times, but I am entertained and have a great time every single time. So if you're one to relax and not take something too serious, this is a perfect one to check out. There have been men who have been burned alive for just a glimpse of what you are about to witness. So I always say The Ninth Gate is a horror version of Indiana Jones. It's creepy and demonic and an absolute blast. It's about a rare book dealer played by Johnny Depp, who while seeking out the last two copies of a demonic text, gets drawn into a conspiracy with supernatural undertones. You don't know what you're getting yourself into, Mr. Corso. Get out before it's too late. Johnny Depp gives an entertaining performance as he battles his way to discover the truth. There's just so much adventure as he travels the world trying to slowly uncover this demonic cult. I love this movie and I suggest you give it a look. Have you ever seen things that weren't there before? I am not imagining this. Surviving is a choice. Yep. I want to yep. let me out of here. Yep. 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 That's why they chose us. And they all. Escape Room really surprised me how good it is. Sadly, the 2021 sequel did not hold up to those standards, but the original really is a well done, entertaining little movie. So it's about six strangers who are each given this mysterious black box. Inside the box is a ticket to an immersive escape room experience where they can win tons of money. Once they arrive, they realize right away that they're playing for much more than money. They're playing for their lives because this is a deadly game. They go from one extreme room to the next as they fight for survival, as well as try to figure out what the mystery and truth is to this whole situation. The acting is okay in this, but it's the traps that really shine because the design of each one, the way they look, all the special effects that go into each one, it's really what makes this movie so much fun. Who would do this? I think it's definitely a great pick when you're looking to just relax, turn your brain off and be entertained, grab some popcorn and enjoy. All right guys, that's gonna do it for me today. Please leave your comments down below. Let me know if you have any recommendations of anything I've missed on Tubi because I always appreciate recommendations. Also, if you could do me a favor, hit the subscribe button and ding that little bell because that is the best way to keep track of this channel. And when I post videos like this, and I post videos like this, every single week. I also want to give a huge, massive, enormous thank you to my patrons because you guys, yeah you, your support seriously means so much to me. And if you would like to find out more about becoming a patron, the link is down in the description. And like always, thank you so much for watching. Please crush that like button. And remember guys, horror can be fun. I will see you guys next time.